Hello everyone and welcome once again to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time we cleared out Secunda's Kiss and my target for this next round is to get to Sleeping Tree Camp. I see... I'm not sure where that Atronach came from. This is a different encounter altogether. I think we actually got two encounters kind of bundled in here. Because if you look over there, you can see a dead witch or wizard. So we got witch fighting Atronach on the one hand. And a little higher up, we have... What is this one called? Bandits dressed as Imperial soldiers. That's this one. So we got two random encounters. It's going to be fun. I would like very much to at least search the witch's body. And ideally the Atronox too, but probably not going to get to do that before we have to start messing with the Never bandits. Now you can see the corpses of the Imperial soldiers these bandits killed and looted. None of them have anything. There's the Flame Atronach, which apparently they were able to kill themselves. That's cool. I really only care about the Fire Salts. With those in hand, I need six more. Alright, let's deal with these guys. You there, uh... Citizen, this area is off limits. You're interfering with the Imperial business. Yeah, so you'll have to pay us a fine. Say, a hundred gold. Pay up, citizen. Might pay off my a hundred gold? You can have it if you can take it from me. If you insist. Come on, boys. This'll be fun. Never you picked up that time. Lost friends. That one's empty. Oh. Like Lydia has adequately begun distracting the other two. I'll show you what a real good. Just a scratch. Boost. Oh, I'm. No one better. I was trying not to hit Lydia. Boost. All you got. Prepared to No one bests an orc. I'm gonna help her. Three on one is just too much, I think. You puny weak. That's the best you can do. Damn you. I fought worse than you. Boost! Well, they bagged Lydia. That's a problem for Just me. Just give up! Boosh! Uh, 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 I swear I'll kill you. Oh, 
good. I was hoping I could bag at least one. I did. God damn it. I'm going to put you down. Just give up. Okay. Obviously can't let these guys get close. You won't leave him alive! I'll skin you alive! That's it! That's all you got! Oh, come on! You won't live to see tomorrow. You won't get the best of me! Oh, balls. Come on. Let me finish him. Without having to deal with his fucking friends for a second. Okay, don't freeze me. Mercy. That was a fully dodgeable attack. You didn't rope me into a kill cam. I cannot trust which you. Which I almost think you is cheating.
end for you. I'll kill you if I damn have you. you. Do your worst. We're having a lot of trouble catching our animations up. Alright, though. I can take you. I'm gonna split. you and your healing spell and she doesn't have anything either but that's okay that took 10 minutes but it's productive that's two more random encounters cleared off the list after all now we are gonna set off to the west of Fort Greymore all the way into some fairly familiar territory We might not actually get to Sleeping Tree Camp. It's a ways out there. And there are significant unmarked locations between here and there. Not to mention the ever-present possibility of running into more random encounters. We'll just have to see. I like to have an anchor save once an encounter is resolved one way or another. We'll stick to the road for the moment. Up there is really the terminus of our explorations so far on this side. You can see the road pretty reliably tracks the mountains, at least at this spot. Here's an obvious dry creek bed. We should poke around up here. See if we can find anything. I believe there might be an ore vein. There might also be nothing. Looks like it's nothing. Okay, well, that's fine. Ah! There's a deer to kill here. Ideally. And there's another random encounter. A nice, neat, beneficial one, though. Boost! Oh, come on! He was so in range for that. Not even close. Boost! Ridiculous. Stop bullshitting me. Then there comes a time where all you're really Boosh! after is turn out a little bit. So I just make one Boosh! or two turns, and I'll still have you in range. God damn it. Oh, if he goes back to the fort, that'll work. But he doesn't, of course. And I start running into lag. Boost! I am staying out of this. Get your ass back. Boost! little too much open space for him to sprint to in a nice Boosh! straight line oh god damn it Boosh! you see that was clutch Come. another fight so was that Boosh! I 
say I just need to get one more hit in. And of course, it doesn't here. happen. Boosh! Fuck you! Give me your antlers. And he doesn't drop any. Naturally. That's okay. Well, let's get these ingredients off the road. And let's clear another random encounter off the list. Here is Mike the Liar. He's repeatable. We'll talk to him each time, I think. All he carries, ordinarily, is three vials of scuba, from me. which I don't need. Mike wishes you well. How does anyone know there was a city of Winterhold? Maik did not see it with his eyes. Did you? What does this mean to combine magic? Magic plus magic is still magic. Too much magic can be dangerous. Maik once had two spells and burned his sweet roll. Maik is tired now. Go bother somebody else. Maik is done talking. All right. Mike's been a fixture since Morrowind. He breaks the fourth wall a little bit. Makes inside jokes about the development of the game, the features it has, that sort of thing. So next to this water feature right here, and now you can at least see Sleeping Tree on the map. Or on the compass. Just barely. We got some mud crabs to deal with. Here by the water feature. I'm going to let Lydia handle them. While I snag an urn root. With that one in hand, we have I need seven more. Getting there. On that one anyway. And that pretty much gets us back to the road, which is nice. Looks like Lydia's fucking up my crab. That's good. I'll ever want to see from her. There's that one. Never kill this one. By that I mean start a fight and then go hide behind her. Excuse me. Alright, that one's down too. So now... You can see some stonework on this central plateau between Fort Greymore and Sleeping Tree. That should intrigue you and pique your interest if you're playing the game right. Before we go explore that, let's check out the planes. As is so often the case, I do not want to start a fight with a mammoth. I want to mine this corrupted plane. Let's give the mammoth a wide berth for now. Ideally, you can leave all the mammoths alive until you're trying to fill a Grand Soul Gem and have both the requisite empty Grand Soul Gem and a way to trap souls. These mammoths, at least early on, are really the only reliable source of Grand Souls you have. Granted, if you've killed them, you can always just wait long enough for them to respawn, but it feels more organic to me to leave them alive until I have a reason, until I have a real reason to kill them. Oh, another random encounter. Oh, thank goodness. I've been wandering alone for so long, I thought I'd never see another soul again. This is Mistwatch Escapee. Take it off my list. Calm down, tell me what happened. I was kidnapped by these bandits weeks ago. They locked me up in the towers near Mistwatch. 
I managed to pick the lock and slip out while the guard slept, but now I'm completely lost. Can you help me, please? There's a town nearby in that direction. Do you need help getting there? Oh, thank you. But I should be fine now that you've shown me the way. But those bandits have to be stopped. They're at Mistwatch. Here, let me show you on your map. If you can stop them, you'll be a true hero. Good to know. All right. I really like to see that random encounter list shrink. There are so many. Towards the end, when you're hunting for particular ones, it can be a real pain. So if you're trying to get a particular one, you're really your only option is to. Oh, hello. We got a deer already running. Boost! Not sure what the something is. Don't really care as long as I can bag it. And this one finally dropped another antlers. Good. With those in hand, I need 13 more. There you go. Let me regain my bearings. There is a little water feature over here, but this is what I was looking for. I knew there was an ore vein. that. I get so stoked when I actually find antlers. I almost consider it worth an anchor save. Not almost, I do. That's why I saved. But, uh, it was already running from something. That, and I hadn't approached it yet. I think it was running from wolves. I think that what we actually got was a repeat of the wolves chasing deer encounter that we had already seen. Oh, there's a wolf over here. Yeah, there's the pair of them. I'll let Lydia handle that. Let's head over to the plateau now. Kind of like to do the circle around it. Now you might recognize those pillars, and there is North Brittle Shin Pass. I mentioned we'd close a loop and get into familiar territory. I think I mentioned that anyway. Damn it. I didn't see that one in time. I never know where my quick save is. Just killed the wolves. That's a solid quick save. I can go after that deer. As long as I find it in time. Boost! Get after him, wolf. Wolf can get to it even if I can't. Oh no, the wolf got distracted. Okay. I need a slightly different strategy here, obviously. Boost! I think item number one should always be Boost! actually hit the thing. Lydia's item number one. I think I'll do better. Well, here's an ore vein. 
The deer still chilling. I don't want to get distracted mining while it runs away. There we go. Yeah, if I can get around it and convince it to run the other direction. Boost! That was close. I think I can certainly make it to the other side. Oh, I don't want it yet. Got two big unmarked spots to explore first. Really? Boost! You! Alright. No antlers, of course. So it goes. Anyway, I've aggroed a couple somethings. Off the plateau, I think. Yep. One's a... Oddly strong skeleton mage. Who always sit at that spot. I'll let Lydia deal with him. Boost! Probably noticing he is much tougher than your average. He, despite being stronger than usual, he doesn't carry anything special. That's okay. We got another skeleton here. This one is completely normal. I will let Lydia... I will retreat. And let Lydia handle him. another skeleton. You go handle that. The expert you are. Now, now I can actually see Sleeping Tree Camp as I look over there. It doesn't take as long as I thought. I don't really care about small antlers. I have all I need. I won't make a big fuss of going after that one. As you go around here, you probably can't help but notice this path. Well, I've got to let Lydia handle this wolf. I've <laughs> got him handled. That's good. Just pinch in around the plateau first. And see that water feature we cleared of mud crabs a minute ago. Kind of see another rise right here. Let's steer around the rise, noticing more stonework over to the right. 
while we follow the path until it links back up with the main road. And now we're in familiar territory because if I wander just a skosh to the left, you will see the road up to South Brittle Shin Pass we've already cleared out. So, let me clear the main road on this side. Oh shit, dragon. Well, that was unexpected. Anyway, here's that dry creek bed. Lydia could handle it over here. I'd hit the fire spell. Frost spell. You could actually just do it. So this is a new random encounter. We'll see it many, many times. That's dragon versus player. It's one where a dragon spawns with the express purpose of attacking you. I'll kill you if I have to. And sure enough. There he is. So, I need to be very careful here. Now, if worst comes to worst, I can run him over to Fort Greymore or even the Western Watchtower to get some help. I'd prefer not to have to do that, but I very, might. I very well may have to. Well, everybody plays around. Let me clear this rise. up to that path, which is the spot I really want to be Good aggression, Lydia. I like to see that. That was an instant death. Ooh, you know what would be easy and would really help? I can pull in that mammoth. It's been circling around here. Boost!
Well, we're close enough now. Oh, he's attacking the mammoth. Good. Good, that's what I wanted. A basic dragon at level 10, a mammoth will tear him up if he, as long as he lands to get into the fight with it. turning the mammoth hostile. That's kind of awesome. Quite have him grounded yet. Damn. Oh, Lydia, don't get too close to the mammoth. Shoot it. It really is just a hit or two away. Being forced to land, and then our bro mammoth can tear him the fuck up. I think he's, I think he's forced to ground now. Shock is a new enchanting effect. I'll put to good use. And bones and scales, of course, are still on my list. With th this in hand, I need seven dragon scales and two dragon bones. And I'm down to 10 pounds of carry weight, which hilariously means I need to go offload, even though I haven't discovered any new locations yet. But, because we've explored up to there, I can use Brittle Shit Pass as a launch point. I need to cover those. I still need to cover that center plateau. And then we can move on to Sleeping Tree Camp itself. 7.32 p.m., however is entirely too risky a time to fast travel back to Whiterun. Still, nice work, bro mammoth. Good teamwork. Alright. 
good. We're You're someone who can get comfortably in the daytime. Let's smelt. I got one corundum ingot. I need 80 more. I got nine iron ingots. I need 572 more. Yeah, everything trucks along nicely. Let's offload right quick. Didn't get any empty uh, soul gems. Plenty of ingredients, a few of which are, subs are significant. Papa, you're home. I, I know it's not much, but I found a few pretty things. They're in the chest in my room. If you see anything you like, please take it. You've done so much for me. It's, it's the least I can do. Well, cool. Thank you. All right, smithing supplies. Deer hide goes in there. Garnet goes in there. Wolf pelts go in there. Vendor trash. Didn't find any gear upgrades. Vendor trash would be food. All this nonsense. Had so many random encounters. I did not find any gear upgrades, however. Oh. I guess she was supposed to have Brave that dialogue the mean. first time it filled she keeps up. Telling Lars and me what to do. <laughs> it just didn't happen anymore. until now. That's fine. Uh, these dragon parts actually are still part of my crafting loop. I don't have everything I need with respect to that yet. Corundum ingot and iron ingots can all go in here, as can those ingredients. Finally, let's get well rested and go disenchant this shield for maximum enchanting XP. With my mother, we sell fruits and vegetables. It's fun most. Let's go ahead and grab a blessing of Talos while we're at it. For he saw in us, in each Slightly shorter cooldown on our stagger would actually help a lot, the reforming the dog especially in the uh, the deer hunting I've been messing with. I should say right now, just because I think of it, I'm taking the. Hall of the Vigilant. Oh, I already did that. Never mind. And I probably even explained it in the video where it happened, and I just forgot that it happened. We've been playing 45 minutes, and haven't too much has happened to allow us to make our way Divine over to smile on you, Sleeping friend. Tree Camp. So it goes when you're playing this game. Resist Shock did get us an enchanting rank. It's up to 43. That's awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Enchanting increased to 43. Hola! Alright. Now, let's head to South Brittleshin Pass. I think that's a little closer to where I want to be. No, actually Fort Greymore is. Because now I'm ready to explore the plateau where the skeleton mage was. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So we'll go to Fort Greymore.
This time, no muss, no fuss, straight west. Past all the dead things we've already killed. skeleton mage was are these graves. It's never quite clear to me what the story with this place is. They're graves and shovels. And that's close to all there is to it. Unless, and actually now I suspect this is the case, it's meant to be a single pulp piece with this altar up on top of the higher plateau where we can find several things. A death bell and a blister wart, both of which are still on my list. That's the last blister wart I need. We've got all of our fortify smithing potion ingredients now. And I need three more death bells for those to clear off the list as well. So we've got two dead novice conjurers. Search the one on the ground first. Nothing special. Search the one on the altar. And you get a whole lot of nothing special and a conjuration skill book. Liminal Bridges. Conjuration increased to 30. This is the second conjuration skill book we found. And that leaves me with four free conjuration boosts left to get. Alright, let's read the book. Liminal Bridges, a discourse on the theory and praxis of traveling between Mundus and Oblivion, by Camelonwe of Alinor. Transliminal passage of quickened objects or entities without the persistent agency of hyperagonal media is not possible, and even if possible, would result in instantaneous retromission of the transported reference. Only a transpontine circumpenetration of the limin will result in transits of greater than infinitesimal duration. Though other hyperagonal media may exist in theory, the only known transliminal artifact capable of sustained transpontine circumpenetration is the Sigil Stone. The Sigil Stone is a specimen of pre-mythic quasi-crystalline morpholith that has been transformed into an extra-dimensional artifact through the arcane inscription of a Daedric Sigil. Though some common morpholiths like soul gems may be found in nature, the exotic morpholiths used to make sigil stones occur only in pocket voids of oblivion and cannot be prospected or harvested without Daedric assistance. Therefore, since both the morpholiths and the Daedric sigils required for hyperagonal media cannot be obtained without traffic and commerce with Daedra lords, it is necessary that a transliminal mechanic cultivate a working knowledge of conjuration though purpose-built enchantments may be substituted if the mechanic has sufficient invocatory skill. Traffic and commerce with Daedra Lords is an esoteric but well-established practice and lies outside the compass of this treatise and no one. Presuming a sigil stone has been acquired, the transliminal mechanic must first prepare the Morpholith to receive the Daedric sigil. Let the mechanic prepare a chamber sealed against all daylight and disturbances of the outer air, roofed and walled with white stone and floored with black tiles. All surfaces of this chamber must be ritually purified with the solution of void salts in ether solvent. A four-square table shall be placed in the center of the room with a dish to receive the morpholith. Four censers shall be prepared with incense compounded from Gorvix and Harada. On the equinox, the mechanic shall then place the morpholith in the dish and intone the rites of the Book of Law beginning at dawn and continuing without cease until the sunset of the same day. The mechanic may then present the purified Morpholith to the Daedra Lord for his inscription. Once inscribed with the Daedra Lord's sigil, the Morpholith becomes a true sigil stone, a powerful artifact that collects and stores arcane power, similar in many respects to a charged soul gem, but of a much greater magnitude. And it is this sigil stone that is required to provide the tremendous arcane power necessary to sustain the enchantment that supports the transpontane circumpenetration of the limin. To open a gate to oblivion, the mechanic must communicate directly by spell or enchantment with the Daedra Lord who inscribed the sigil stone in question. 
The Daedra Lord and the Mechanic jointly invoke the Conjurational Charter, Endnote 2, and the Mechanic activates the char Charged Sigil Stone, which is immediately transported through the Liminal Barrier to the spot where its sigil was inscribed, thus opening a temporary portal between Mundus and Oblivion. This portal may only remain open for a brief period of time, depending on the strength of the liminal barrier at the chosen spots, several minutes being the longest ever reported, so the usefulness of such a gate is quite limited. 1. Interested students are invited to consult the works of Albrecht, Theophanes, Bombidius, and Galerian the Mystic for the fundaments of this discipline. 2. Recommended examples of the Conjurational Charter may be found in Therian's Book of Most Arcane Covenants, or Ralibala's Eleven Ritual Forms. And there you go. Let's move on. we got about ten minutes left. There's a mammoth on the loose for some reason. And he appears to have teleported away. For some even less clear reason. So I want to do this set of stones next. I think I can finish that up and arrive at Sleeping Tree as my means of ending this video. Well, we'll do that. Don't miss this iron vein. Always critical. We need so many iron ingots after all, you never want to miss any of them. Ah! Here's a new encounter. Come along, no more stops. We need to find our way to solitude. This is... On the way to the wedding. This is one that you, this is a missable one. It's one you m will only see if you get it before you start Bound Until Death. And we, of course, did. Why are we even going? Yes? This far-flung end of the em Plotus Carvain. Where okay. anyway? I need his... Well, let's listen I told to you, it's the wedding of Vittoria Vici, an extremely well-connected merchant with the East Empire Company. The Emperor's cousin, remember? Hopefully these gifts will put us in her good graces, secure that import deal, and lead the way to an audience with the Emperor. Alright. Let's pick his pockets first. I need these amethysts. Both show. And I want the garnet. Uh, not the brandy, the garnet. You know, the thing I clicked on? Don't, Don't need the rest. About it. Let's pickpocket Salonia as well. I guess I can... Again, she's got some gems I want. Don't need anything I else. I guess I can... Come on. Wrong button. I guess I can look... Getting some pickpocket ranks from this. Naturally. Ugh. Speak to my husband if you must. Ugh. Speak to my husband if you must. Don't bother me, peasant. I've had a long journey and paid too much coin on these gifts to be late to Vittoria's wedding. Enjoy the wedding. Indeed, if we ever get there. Huh. So you can rob them. I actually didn't know you were able to rob them. That's kind of fun. So this path... Remember the iron vein? That's kind of the landmark I'm going to use as I clear the area around the plateau. Obviously, we've been here before, but I never cleared it out, and apparently Oof! I even left it here. Don't kill Cam unless he's actually going to die, game. No antlers, of course. That's okay, though. Getting better and better at killing him. So, we should poke around up here. Kind of using this ridge as a divider. Brittle Shin Pass is right there. We've already been there, of course. You can actually see South Brittle Shin Pass on the compass. It's over the wall, of course. 
this looks like a path, and indeed, you can actually bull your way up and over the mountains directly there if you want to. It leads to that uh, silver vein I took us to back when we were over there. Now we're getting closer. That path we saw is that actually leads out to Sleeping Tree Camp. It goes around this interesting little spot. This spot is definitely worth your time to explore. You'll see why in a moment. We can follow the path over here. And as is Oh shit, two giants. I think they might be the residents of Sleeping Tree. Regardless. I'm gonna need to fight them. I'll uh, save that for the next video. Because I really do want to at least get this little bit done. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Here's the path back to the road. You can go through these little ruins if you want to. Now let's clear the ruins themselves. We got a few plants. Obviously, what we want to do is get that grate open by solving the puzzle. That is fairly easy to do. This one is whale. This one is eagle. You can see it fallen there. This one is snake. You can see where it fell right there as well the handle, gate pops open, drop down in here, it's a skeleton you can search, he doesn't have anything, we got some useless stuff, and a new book, a hypothetical treachery is, should be the first destruction skill book we found. Destruction increased to 29, a hypothetical treachery, a one-act play by Enfil Morvir. Book list. Yes, it is the first destruction skill book I found. If I go to the free skill boost list, I have five left after finding it. And we'll read it, and that'll be the end of this video. Next time, we'll fight those two giants and head over to Sleeping Tree itself. Dramatis Personae, Malvasian, a High Elf Battle Mage, Enzolia, a Dark Elf Battle Mage, Dolcetus, a Cyrodiil Healer, Shiavas, an Argonian Barbarian, a Ghost, some Bandits, Scene, Eldenwood. As the curtain rises, we see the misty labyrinthian landscape of the legendary Elden Grove of Valenwood. All around, we hear wolves howling. A bloodied reptilian figure, Shiavas, breaks through the branches of the, one of the trees and surveys the area. Shiavas, it's clear. Enzolia, a beautiful Dark Elf Mage, climbs down from the tree, helped by the barbarian. There is the sound of footsteps nearby. Shiavas readies his sword, and Enzolia prepares to cast a spell. Nothing comes out. Enzolia, you're bleeding. You should have Dolcetus heal that for you. Shiavas, he's still drained from all the spells he had to cast down in the caves. I'm fine. If we get out of this and no one needs it more, I'll take the last potion of healing. Where's Malvasian? Malvasian, a high elf battle mage, and Dolcetus, a Cyrodiil healer, emerge from the tree, carrying a heavy chest between the two of them. They awkwardly try to get down from the tree, carrying their loot. Malvasian, here I am, the why I'm carrying the heavy load is beyond me. I always thought that the advantage of dungeon delving with a great barbarian was that he carried all the loot. Shiavas, if I carried that, my hands would be too full to fight. And tell me if I'm wrong, but not one of the three of you has enough magicka reserved to make it out of here alive. Not after you electrified and blasted all those homunculuses down below ground. Dolcetus, homunculi. Chiavis, don't worry, I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. Inzolia, innocently. What's that? Chiavis, 
kill you all and take the ebony mail for myself. Admit it, you thought I had that in mind. Dolcetus, what a perfectly horrible thought. I never thought anyone, no matter how vile and degenerate, in Zolia. Why not? Malvasian, he needs porters, like he said. He can't carry the chest and fight off the inhabitants of Elden Grove, both. Dolcetus, by Stendar, of all the mean, conniving, typically Argonian, in Zolia. And why do you need me alive? And why do you need me alive? Shiavas, I don't necessarily, except that you're prettier than the other two, for a smooth skin, that is. And if something comes after us, it might go for you first. There is a noise in some bushes nearby. Shiavas, go check that out. In Zolia, it's probably a wolf. These woods are filled with them. You check it out. Shiavas, you have a choice in Zolia. Go and you might live. Stay here and you definitely won't. In Zolia considers and then goes to the bushes. Shiavas, to Malvasian and Dolcetus. The King of Sylvanar will pay good money for the mail, and we can divide it more nicely between three than four. In Zolia, you're so right. In Zolia suddenly levitates up to the top of the stage. A semi-transparent ghost appears from the bush and rushes at the next person, who happens to be Shiavas. As the barbarian screams and thrashes at it with his sword, it levels blasts of whirling gas at him. He crumbles to the ground. It turns next to Dolcetus, the healer, and as the ghost focuses its feasting chill on the hapless Dolcetus, Malvasian casts a ball of flame at it that causes it to vaporize into the misty air. Inzolia floats back down to the ground as Malvasian examines the bodies of Dolcetus and Shiavas, who are both white-faced from the draining power of the ghost. Malvasian, you had some magicka reserved after all. Inzolia, so did you. Are they dead? Malvasian takes the potion of healing from Dolcetus's pack. Malvasian, yes. Fortunately, the potion of healing wasn't broken when he fell. Well, I guess this leaves just the two of us to collect the reward. Inzolia, we can't get out of this place without each other, like it or not. The two battle mages pick up the chest and begin plodding carefully through the undergrowth, pausing from time to time at the sound of footsteps or other eerie noises. Malvasian, let me make sure I understand. You have a little bit of magicka left, so you elected to use it to make Shiavas the ghost's target, forcing me to use most of my limited reserve to destroy the creature so I wouldn't be more powerful than you. That's first-rate thinking. Inzolia, thank you. It's only logical. Do you have enough power to cast any other spells? Malvasian, Naturally, an experienced battle mage always knows a few minor but highly effective spells for just such a trial. I take it you two have a few tricks up your sleeve? In Zolia, of course, like you said. They pause for a moment before continuing as a fearful wail pierces the air. When it dies away, they slowly trudge on. In Zolia, just as an intellectual exercise, I wonder what spell you would cast at me if we made it out of here without any more combat. Malvasian, I hope you're not implying that I would dream of killing you so I could, would keep the treasure all to myself. In Zolia, of course not, nor would I do that to you. It is merely an intellectual exercise. Malvasian, well in that case, purely as an intellectual exercise, I would probably cast a leech spell on you to take away your life force and heal myself. After all, there are brigands on the road between here and Sylvanar, and a wounded battle mage with a valuable artifact would make a tempting target. I'd hate to survive Elden Grove merely to die in the open. In Zolia, that's a well-reasoned response. As for myself, again, not saying I would ever do this, but I think a simple sudden electrical bolt would serve my purposes admirably. I agree about the danger of brigands, but don't forget we also have a potion of healing. I could easily slay you and heal myself to full capacity. Alvasian, very true. It would end up a question then of whose spell was more effective at that instant. If our spells counteracted one another and I leached your life energy only to be crippled by your lightning bolt, then we could both be killed, or so near death that a mere potion of healing would scarcely help either one of us, let alone both. How ironic it would be if two scheming battle mages, not saying we are scheming, but for the purpose of this intellectual exercise, were left on the brink of death completely drained of magicka with one healing potion to choose from. Who would get it then? In Zolia. Logically, whoever drank it first, which in this case would be you since you're holding it. Now, what if one of us were injured but not killed? Malvasian. Logic would dictate that a scheming battle mage would take the potion, leaving the injured party to the mercy of the elements, I suppose. In Zolia. That does seem most sensible, but suppose that the battle mages, while certainly scheming types, had a certain respect for one another. Perhaps in that case, the victorious one might, for instance, put the potion up a tree near his or her gravely wounded victim. Then, when the wounded party had enough magicka replenished, he or she would be able to levitate to the tree branches and recover the potion. By that time, the victorious battle mage would have already collected the reward. 
They pause for a moment at the sound of something in the bushes nearby. Carefully, they climb across the branches of a tree to bypass it. Malvasian, I understand what you're saying, but it seems out of character for our hypothetic scheming battle mage to allow his or her victim to live. In Zolia, perhaps, but it's been my observation that most scheming battle mages enjoy the feeling of having bested someone in combat and having that person alive to live with the humiliation. Malvasian, these hypothetical scheming battle mages sound excitedly. Daylight, do you see it? The two scurry across the branch, dropping behind a bush so we can no longer see them. We can, however, see the shimmering halo of sunlight. Malvasian, behind the tall bush. We made it. In Zolia, likewise behind the tall bush. Indeed. There is a sudden explosion of electrical energy and a wild howling aura of red light and then silence. After a few moments' pause, we hear someone climbing up the tree. It is Malvasian, putting the potion high up in the bow. He chuckles as he climbs back down and the curtain drops. Epilogue. The curtain rises on a road to Sylvanar. A gang of bandits have surrounded Malvasian, <laughs> who is propped up on his staff, barely able to stand. They pull his chest away from him with ease. Bandit number one, what have we got here? Don't you know it ain't safe to be out on the road all sick like you are? Why don't we help you with your load? Malvasian, weakly, please, let me be. Bandit number two, go on, spellcaster, fight us for it. Malvasian, I can't, too weak. Suddenly, Enzolia flies in, casting lightning bolts from her fingers at the bandits, who quickly scramble away. She lands on the ground and picks up the chest. Malvasian collapses, dying. Malvasian, hypothetically, what if a battle mage cast a spell on another which didn't harm him at once, but drained his life force and his magicka bit by bit so he wouldn't know at the time, but feel confident enough to leave the potion of healing behind? Enzolia, a most treacherous battle mage she'd be. Malvasian, and, hypothetically, would she be likely to help her fallen foe so that she could enjoy the humiliation of him continuing to live? In Zolia, from my experience, hypothetically, no, she doesn't sound like a fool. As Enzolia lugs the chest off towards Sylvanar and Malvasian expires on the stage, we drop the curtain. And with that, we end the video. We've got two giants to fight. That'll kick off next time. I don't see a way we're going to separate these two from each other. That's not horrific. We killed we killed two together earlier with Utgard, and we've improved since then. So that's what's going to happen next time on Let's Play Skyrim. Then, of course, we'll make our way to Sleeping Tree Camp. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing to the channel. If you don't do any of those, know that I appreciate the time you choose to spend with me. I realize your time is valuable, there are lots and lots of YouTube videos, there are lots and lots of Skyrim playthroughs on YouTube, and I thank you for choosing to watch mine. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.